So let's start with the list growth strategies. Now, this is by far the most important aspect with SMS, right? It doesn't matter how good our flows were or how good the copy was in our automations. If you don't have an influx of customers coming in, you're not going to be able to monetize it, right? So it's really important that you have an influx of customers coming in. And the general rule is that the more the merrier. Now, besides list health, the more people that you can sell to, the more money that you'll be able to make, right? So what are some incentives that customers really want that will make them opt into your list? Now, I speak to a lot of customers, and that's part of my job as a marketer to bridge the gap between the founder and the customer to make sure that they're in sync and that they speak the same language, right? And a lot of the times, the customers that I speak to, and this is across niches, say that the common 10%, 15% discount off is not enough for them to opt in, right? And I can tell you, with a lot of the brands doing this from face value without going into their list, their list is probably growing like turtles really, really slow. Now, remember, you are in the war of attention with other brands. They are your competition. It is business after all. And if you really want to outpace them, outsmart them, you have to have a really good front end offer that is irresistible, right? Stop beating around the bush. Stop being lazy. Start dealing with the hard shit, and then actually have an irresistible offer. And a lot of the times you don't necessarily need to always have a standard 10%, 15% discount, because that means you're not cutting through the noise. You just look like every other brand that's out there, right? So there are various ways that you can do this. Um, free product, free shipping, a dollar amount off, that can be 10, 20, five, uh, sometimes we've done test, and then the difference between five and 10, uh, the conversion rate with regards to the opt-in rate is not that big of a difference. So you don't always need to go high in, uh, in some cases, right? You can have a PDF of value, and that can vary from brand to brand. So perhaps you have a brand where your customer really needs post-purchase support, then having a PDF of value is invaluable, right? So let's say you are marketing to new homeowners. You want to be able to tell them what decor, what color, what all of these things that they would want to know because it's anxious and it's a big step buying a home. You can make that easier for them by giving them a PDF of value, right? Um, I see Judy do this a lot also where they provide... Um, free product, free samples, or, you know, certain PDFs where they can send text, educational tips and all of that. And then you can also do the um, standard angle of get exclusive access. Now, this really, really works, but there's a caveat to this, right? It doesn't apply to every brand and every growth stage. Now, with all of these tips, there's some context into it, especially with this one. Um, and the reason why this one does not work with every brand is because if you're just starting out, using this angle is not going to help you grow your list as fast as you can. And the reason why is because customers don't trust you, right? They don't know how your product is. It doesn't matter how much you market to them and tell them this is the best product. Until they experience it, they really won't know, Um so this get exclusive access to really works well with brands that have built a customer um, facing brand, a customer brand that is that has raving fans, loyal fans where they buy often from. And I would really want to want um, early access to that. Right. But if you're just starting out, this most probably won't work. I mean, why would I want early access to something I haven't even tried yet? So think about these things. Um, test it out also. So what has worked for us um, that we don't see being applied throughout, right? And that is free product. Time and time and time again, I can't tell you enough. This works all the time. And it doesn't matter if you are a big brand with raving fans, they want that free product, right? It, it's even better if you give them a free product, right? If you're just starting out, oh, it's even better as well because then they can get to try it without any friction. So this one works time and time again. And for you as the founder, it also works because you know that if you're on Shopify, 
uh, which is where most of my clients are, setting up multiple discounts, it's such a pain in the ass. So having a free product front end really, really works. When we tried this, I kid you not, our list growth went from like 35% to 600%, right? It makes a huge difference. So do the hard stuff. Don't be lazy. Don't be cheap. If you're serious about building your list, then try this out, right? And this is really what customers want. <laughs> Who wouldn't want a free product, you know? So, yeah. Um, let's get into the evergreen options that you have when it comes to building your list. You have the pop-ups and then you have converting your email list. Then you have your keywords. Um, send uh, keyword X text to opt-in, right? And then you have your landing page dedicated just to lead generation. So let's start with the pop-ups. So a typical pop-up will look like this and it should have um, consensual um, legal links down here. If you want to build your list and serious about doing it, do it the right way, right? Don't try and take shortcuts and all of that. Make sure that you have consensual language on top of your or below your pop-up. Um, that's just the standard, right? Now, what works that makes it super easy for customers to sign up? Um, and that is the tap to text strategy. Now, this one was actually invented by Attentive. I might be wrong about this one, um, but I think they were the one who they were the ones who actually came up with it first, right? So this is how the tap to text actually looks like, right? When you see the pop up show up first, all they have to do is just tap to get the ten percent discount. A pre filled text shows up in their messenger, and all they have to do is send. Two tap. That's it. Two taps. They opted in. It makes it super, super easy. And that's why we use this one as well. Now, there's another sneaky one that we use, and that's the two form one as well, where we collect both email and SMS. Um, that one works really, really well as well. And then let's start with the second one converting your email list. Now, this is most probably the lowest hanging fruit you can have. Oh my God, the amount of conversions that we have from our email list was so much better. And this works out for a bunch of reasons, right? One, these people are already on your list. They know and trust your brand. They've already bought once or twice, right? So it's not like they're signing up to a brand new brand and then going to that next level of being on your SMS list where they can get a lot more perks is just a no brainer for them. Second, your best VIPs are most probably on your list already. So getting them to a channel where they can really and truly feel like VIPs just makes it a lot better. And once they get that experience, trust me, they're going to stay with you a lot longer. And this is why SMS, the engagement rate is so high and the ability to build that AOV and LTV is super, super insane because once your VIPs are on your email list, getting them to your SMS, it's immediate, it's convenient. It works out for both parties, right? They get super um, exclusive perks and they get to see it um, besides just, you know, being on the email list, right? And yeah, number three is Clavio also has a conditional block where you're able to send emails to people who have not subbed yet. So that's a great thing about Clavio also. Um, and you can send them through a post-purchase flow. So people who have literally just bought, or you can send um, a sweet deal to your VIP VIPs, right? So this is what um, your email might look like. So let's start with the keywords. Now, the keywords, there are many use cases for this. Um, what, what I see working is a lot of brands using um, the brand name as the keyword. Makes it a lot more memorable, but just remember you want to make it as short and sweet as possible. And also you want to be able to eliminate spelling mistakes, right? So if your brand is yummy, gummy, summy, don't use that as your keywords. I mean, people are more likely to make a mistake, especially if there's two M's involved, things like that. Just 
in that case, you would just say yum, 15% or yum, 15, right? To make it as easy as possible to remember so that we inhibit spelling mistakes. Then we have specific landing pages dedicated to um, capturing SMS and email, right? Now, this is most probably the fastest way that you can grow. Email being the lowest hanging fruit, landing pages being the fastest way that you can grow, right? So a really, really um, awesome tip that we have tested out was instead of using Facebook lead generation, because we used to use Facebook as for lead generation, we started using TikTok for lead generation. And oh my God, it's a lot cheaper. Um, it works out really, really well. And the reason for this is because you're not asking them to convert. Now, that's the issue with a lot of the TikTok traffic, right? It's super cheap, dirt cheap, but getting them to convert is a lot harder. And that's why it's a really good um, traffic platform for top of funnel, not necessarily for retargeting. So use TikTok for lead generation. You're not asking them to convert. You're asking them to, you know, go on a date with you see how things are, introduce the brand, introduce myself. So this is a really good strategy and it's dirt cheap. So let's get to our most profitable automations um, that we implemented. Number one, we had the conversational flows. Number two, welcome series, abandoned cart, um, browse abandonment, and then post purchase, right? Now, if you're wondering what are conversational flows, like what does that actually look like? And I've explained this in my welcome series that um, a conversational flow basically segments your customers, right? So let's pretend that we have a baby fashion brand, right? We're selling baby clothes for toddlers. Um, now this is just, don't pay attention to the text. I just wanna, this is just for example purposes, right? You would then ask, are you shopping for a girl or a boy? Which makes the experience a lot more personalized. And if they say a boy, perfect, awesome, me too. Um, here's, you know, a really good product recommendation or here is a really good product that's been flying off the shelf with boy moms. They really love it. Or here's a 10% discount. You know, my I have a son who's a boy too. Um, and vice versa, right? If it is a female, you can make personalized recommendations as well. And that is really why people are opting into your SMS, right? So that they can get a personalized experience. I don't want to know what works for everybody. I want to know what works for me as a mom who has two kids, has a job, has a husband, and I have a lot of things to deal with. I want to know what you have for me and my personal pain points. And that is really what personalized means for that specific customer avatar. Now, if you're selling two different products, then you can, you're able to segment them, right? And you're able to use this data also for when you're running ads, right? You're able to use this data to segment your customers as well. So you can target them a lot better, right? Now, there are many benefits to this. Number one, it creates a five-star customer experience. You texting me and letting me know, hey, Famka, I know you're a mom. I know you're having trouble sleeping. Here's a supplement that can help you with that. Oh, my God. That is the power of text. It's immediate. It's personal. It's not spammy. I wouldn't mind you texting me then, but if you're just spamming me, blasting me, then, oh God, I'm opting out, right? You can give them specific recommendations, which is really why customers opt in for your SMS. You can give them specific educational tips, right? You can say, hey, I know boys are often overlooked uh, when it comes to baby fashion shopping. Now, here are some tips about boys, you know, things like that, right? And Ultimately, it brings a much higher ROI. A personalized shopping experience equals gold. Guys, guys, this is, if there's anything that, you know, I would want you to really look into if you're going to SMS, it's creating a personalized shopping experience, right? If you've ever been to Dubai, you'll really realize like these guys take it to a next level and they don't do it for fun. It's because they know that there's money in it. 
people want you to create a personalized experience for them, right? Not just make it out like you catering to everyone. I'm not going to feel special, right? And that's the point of SMS. You want them to make you, you want them to feel special, right? You want them to have this stellar experience to create micro influences for your brand, right? For them to, you wouldn't even need to spend a lot of money if you do this right. And that's why we're able to scale it um, that much because we focused heavily on this. So how often and when to send? So how often? Recommended times is two to eight times per month. That could mean twice a week. Um, best times to send. So we have tested this a ton, uh, not texted, <laughs> um, and found that, you know, for the brands we've worked for, um, this is definitely the best time to send. So from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and I think why this works is because, you know, 4 p.m., a lot of people are coming off of work and they start getting unproductive. They start browsing on their phones. Um, sometimes it works like doing after work, after peak hours, so 7, 8, but nothing later than that. Um, also, Sunday um, Sunday and Saturday work really well. We've tested out sending SMSs on those times and it works really, really well. And this is why SMS does so insanely well because you're able to reach them. It's immediate compared to if you're sending an email out on Saturday and Sunday, honey, good luck. <laughs> no one is in their email on a Sunday or Saturday, right? So tracking and analytics. Now this is very, very important. You wanna be able to track your campaigns, right? And the different platforms provide different solutions for this. Now I'm gonna show you an example for um, Postscript. So let's go through uh, what analytics you should really optimize for, right? Um, and that is click-through rate and then conversion rate and then opt-out rate. You wanna be able to reduce the opt-out rate. So anytime you're doing a test and you have a high opt-out rate, that is a no-go, right? That test didn't work, on to the next one. If you're having a test where perhaps you're testing different offers and it has a really nice um, click-through rate and a good conversion rate, that means that is your blue unicorn test test more of that do different variations of that right so let's get into tracking so with tracking there is a really cool way that you can track and postscript um easily does this for you so you can go to your postscript dashboard scroll down to the shop name and then select tracking now obviously i am going to do this um with you so what you basically do is go to your Postscript dashboard. So your dashboard is there, but then you would go click your shop name and then you would go to tracking, right? So the really nice thing about Postscript is that it has one day click and then seven day um, click as well. I mean, one day view and then seven day click. That's great because then you're able to see what really is attributed to attributed to SMS and accurately. You're accurately able to see what ROI you're getting with SMS. So as soon as you come to tracking, um, these might be empty. So what you just do is you can either click static, which means that once you go to your Google Analytics, it will show that this is the revenue attributed to Postscript or you can click um, campaign segment, which means that the specific campaign that you're, um, you're working with, that is gonna show up, right? This ROI, 3X ROI is gonna come from, you know, your welcome series or your abandoned cart. I mean, yeah, your abandoned cart. But if you just wanted to say, hey, I just want this um, attribution to be from Postscript, then that's perfect also. The same thing here. If you want it to be a static value to just say, um, I just want this to come from Postscript, then by all means. But if you want the specific automation name, right? Or the specific, yeah, automation name that you want showing up, then you can always click that. Um, but yeah, for us seeing that this is the amount of attribution coming from Postscript works well also. So 
let's get on to the specific platforms, right? What platforms do you use? And we've tested a ton, right? Clavio, Emotive, Postscript, Attentive, SMS Bump, right? So let's go through, yeah. So be sure to subscribe for more SMS content. Um, if you want to see more of this and be the first one to see, um, do subscribe. So let's get on to what we're actually looking for and what you should definitely consider when um, dealing with SMS or choosing a specific platform, right? I would urge you to look at your integrations, right? What integrations do they have? And the ability to split test because you really want to be able to split test and see, and then your attribution. Uh, you want to be able to see an accurate ROI, um, a view of the ROI, if it's accurate or not. Um, it's customer support and ease of use and whether you can create conversational flows. Because remember, this data does not only stick to SMS. You can do it cross-platform, right? You can use it for your paid ads. So don't overlook this and don't overlook implementing it as well, right? So let's start with Attentive. So Attentive is really, really great for enterprise brands, right? And it really serves a bunch of industries. It's not just e-commerce. And um, the really nice thing about uh, Attentive is that it has a stellar compliance team. They actually have an in-house legal team to ensure that you're protected, which is always, always nice, right? Sometimes, you know, yeah. Um, that can mean that they can be a bit strict, but all is well. You always want to be protected. That's the point, right? They have conversational flows. They have integrations like Zendesk, Zendesk um, Clavio, MailChimp. Um, their attribution is a 30-day attribution, um, which can lead to inaccurate reporting of ROI. Um, but they also have A-B testing and their customer support is really, really good. That's what I like about Attentive also. Um, now go to Postscript. Postscript is really, it was built with Shopify brands in mind, nothing else. This is specifically built and made for Shopify brands, right? So this really works for small to medium sized brands. Um, it by far, it has the strongest Shopify integration by far, right? You can pull historical data and you can unlock um, advanced segmentations, right? The only thing is they don't have conversational flows. It's still in beta and it hasn't been released. Um, as I said, they have a really bunch, um, a strong integration with um, Shopify. So they have Zendesk, Recharge, Kendo, Clavio, Privy, Sumo, Cart, Hook, Gorgeous, so much, right? Attribution is one day, um, one day view, seven day click, which is really, really great, which I showed you. Then they have A-B testing and their customer support is stellar, chef's kiss. <laughs> um, then we have SMS bump, right? So SMS bump is really great if you are using Yotpo already, right? So this is also great for small to medium sized brands. Um, they're by far the cheapest also. Um, they don't have conversational flows. Um, I would definitely improve on the integrations and support, right? They have in-house tracking, which is great, and they have A-B testing, right? And the great thing that they also have is that um, they have dynamic abandoned cart messages, right? Which shows you the exact product that the person clicked on, right? Which is nice because you want to be able to um, show the person what exactly that they clicked on it. It hits them, right? I, I really like this product. So show me exactly what I like. Oh, wait, we missed Clavio. Then, then we have Clavio, right? Now, Clavio is great if you haven't dabbled in SMS, right? If you're just playing around, it's just, it just added SMS, I think a year ago, two years ago. So uh, a lot of its products are really, they put a lot of money into their email, which makes sense, you know? So it has some catching up to do when it comes to SMS, right? But once Clavio gets to the level of attentive, emotive, when it comes to SMS, then, oh my God, it's going to kill all of their competition because they already have email, right? So conversational flows, no. Um, 
the integrations they can also improve. Um, so they don't have some um, customer support tools, um, although it has some um, Zoho and Alpscout, right? It has in-house tracking and attribution. You can A-B test customer support, uh, not that great, right? They also have dynamic images to showcase specific products, um, which is the same for SMS bump. And also the fact that they have um, both SMS and email in one platform makes for a really powerful case, right? Um, but I think they definitely have some catching up to do. So in terms of pricing, these are the four platforms and their pricing. Um, so you can choose, right? Now, the one that we most definitely use a lot more is Postscript and Attentive, right? But if you ask me which one is the best overall, that's a different question, right? But a lot of the times um, when a client comes to me and they're already using Clavio, then we'll just hop into Clavio. If they're already using um, Postscript, we'll just use Postscript and alike, right? Um, so yeah. That is the end of the tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, subscribe for more and thank you for watching. If you liked it, let me know. If you didn't, let me know too, right?